Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Coca Pelli, designed by Stefan Feld from Queen Games. Now, Coca Pelli is one of Stefan Feld's more recent games. And Stefan Feld is a designer, is a designer whose games I have generally either loved or liked. And yet, Coca Pelli didn't really draw me in when I first found out about the game. But let's go into the game, let's talk with the reviews, timestamps down below, all of that stuff. But. Cocopelli is a game where you're going to win by gathering the most points. These various point tokens are going to give you points in the game, and you're trying to get as many of them as possible, not unlike a lot of games. But the way you get points in Cocopelli is going to be a few different ways. The primary mechanism is going to be by completing ceremonies. You see, this over here is a ceremony, that's a ceremony, ceremony, ceremony. All these cards that are played on the table are ceremonies. And when you play the fourth card to a ceremony, if someone plays a fourth blue card here, they will get the four blue points for completing that particular ceremony. The next person will get three points for completing that ceremony. And then after that, you will place it with this token and everyone else will get only one point. That is the primary way you get points. A few other ways you get points are going to be when someone completes your ceremony, a big part of the game, you get a point of compensation. Additionally, when you empty your hand of cards, when you have your hand of cards, you go down to zero. That degree of efficiency is going to result in you getting a point and drawing three cards. And finally, different card abilities are going to give you points for different things. You may have a card in play that gives you an additional point every time you complete a ceremony, or maybe a different card that gives you a point every time one of your ceremonies is completed, a slight different nuanced version of the way those give points. That is primarily what's going on here. So what is what is the game engine? How do you actually start moving forward with this? Well, ultimately on your turn, you're going to take two actions. Those actions are going to be, let's go ahead and start with our hand of five cards over here. Those actions are going to be either, let's say, starting a new ceremony. So for instance, I'm going to start the ceremony here. That's one of five possible actions, two of which I can do every single turn. Now, this action over here, having a card of a ceremony for starting a new ceremony, is going to give me an ability as long as this card is in play, which is the nuance of Cocapelli. The entire nuance of this game is the fact that every time you play a card, you are effectively giving yourself a tableau ability. You're giving yourself some way of improving the engine that's going on. Right now, all my ceremonies are only completed with three cards, which means I can complete ceremonies faster, which could be better. The flip side is I also want to complete the ceremony because that gives me points. So the entire game is a balance of completing ceremonies at the right time to get as many points as possible while having your tableau wide open. The way you can balance that is by being mean because you can start ceremonies in your board, but you can play ceremony cards to the board to the players next to you, specifically the two zones bordering. So I can play cards here, here, and here. I cannot play any cards over here. So for my second action, I'm going to go ahead and play this blue card, and I'm going to go ahead and complete their ceremony, getting four points. They're going to get a point of compensation, and not only have I basically well gotten points, I've also denied him his ability. His ability is now out of play, it goes to discard pile, which is part of the balance of the game. You want to get yourself abilities, you want to complete other ceremonies, you want to complete your own ceremonies when the timing's right, because you also want to take away abilities from others, so there's an interesting balanced mechanism going on here. The other actions you can take, just so you're aware, is you can actually go ahead and cancel a ceremony as well, putting that into my discard pile. You can also go ahead and draw a card as an action, and then finally you can go ahead and exchange your cards to the bottom of your deck, and then draw up that many cards as an action. Which brings us to the last way you get points, is when the game end is triggered, which happens either when a player runs out of cards, or alternatively when all these tokens are gone, then you're also going to get points. The person who has the fewest cards remaining in their deck will get five points, and the second fewest will get three points. And that is Cocopelli. Once again, quick summary, goal is to get points. Points are going to be primarily earned through abilities and through the various completing of ceremonies, and the balance and struggle of the game is going to be playing cards to give yourself abilities while closing off the abilities of others, while closing off your own abilities so that you can start new abilities, all while gathering points and balancing everything that I just talked about. The last thing to note is the fact that you may see in front of you on the table, there are 10 different ability cards. But part of the fun of Cocopelli is going to be the variability. You see, this is with the base game and expansion, but between the two, we have a total of 25 different abilities, of which only 10 are in play every single game, which means someone else can do the math on that. There's a formula for that when you have basically 10 unique items from a subset of 25 unique items. How many permutations, how many combinations of this game are there, which is a good time to jump into the review of what I like, didn't like, and can see others not liking about Cocopelli. And to begin with, like we're talking about already, that variability. 
that variability is near infinite. And the potential for future expansions as well at the same time. You could have another expansion introducing 10 more abilities, 10 more small little things, and that would further enhance and, and make this game so infinitely variable. This is a game where every time I've dived into it, it's a new puzzle of which abilities do I want to combine? Well, this one pairs well with this one. That one pairs well with that one. These three pair well together. Don't actually take that as to mean anything because I'm just saying things. But different abilities will pair well with each other. Different combinations work well well. Some, some ceremonies just want to be built so that you can complete them. We haven't talked about, one thing we didn't talk about is every player has six cards in their deck that are Cocapelli cards. These are wild cards that can be added to any single ceremony. So you're going to have three of each card, remembering that you need four to complete a ceremony, plus the wilds, plus abilities, all of which work together to give you a puzzle of what engine am I trying to build? Am I trying to complete ceremonies faster? Am I trying to get points better, better, better earn points for the ceremonies I build? Do I want to try to incentivize others to build, other players to go on my board, which can help me clear my things faster? Do I want to potentially get rewards for going on others' boards? Everything gives you a different way you can augment. Maybe I'm enhancing my draw card action, so now I can draw cards from the top of your discard pile. Maybe alternatively when I draw cards, I draw two cards instead at that time. Maybe whenever I draw cards, I can immediately play them two ceremonies. There are tons of different abilities in this game, all of which combine to give you powers and abilities, which if you've watched my channel before, you know that I like, and additionally the variability of those powers and abilities. It is a different puzzle every single time you play. And this game is easy to teach, it's easy to play, it plays well, it tables well, it's quick to set up, it's quick to cheer down, it plays well at two, three, and four players, although I would say two and three I can make a strong case which one I prefer, I don't actually know, but as four players is a drop slower and does give you that aspect of the player across from you you're not really interacting with at all, so it slightly removes from my, I would say two and three is really well, and four, I'm happy to play it. It's still a time, it's still a 45 minute game, even at four players. And then the balance of points versus abilities is a huge part of what this game is. The entire game is based around that balance. Do I want to try to build up my tableau? Do I want to get those abilities in play? But as I close things off, I'll also get points. So right now I have the, the option on, in my hand in front of me, I have the option to play a card that will give me four points. But it also means I'm no longer drawing two cards with an action, I'm only drawing one card at a time. And that is a constant struggle and balance you'll go through as you play Cocopelli. Close things off too early and you'll be left the weakest player at the table, perhaps with the most points, but will that last you the rest of the game? Close things off too late, and you might have the strongest abilities on the table, but you don't have enough points in the game. Of course, you obviously want to go to your opponents and start closing their things off, but an opponent who's well balanced in their cards, keeping their cards at one at a time so you can't immediately close them off, there's still a balance there. Although, of course, your abilities can mitigate that. Maybe you have the ability card, but when you play Cocopelli cards, they count as two, and so suddenly you can close. There's so many different things to manage as you go through this game, but that balance of now versus later, of points versus abilities, is a constant twist of this game. Timing is everything as you play Cocopelli. And nearly everything combines, by the way. This is one of those games where I'm sure there, I'm sure someone can find a combination of ten different abilities that don't pair well with each other. Although I'm actually not that sure. Every time I've randomly generated a, a set of ten abilities, I haven't tried to think through, well, this pairs with that, that pairs with that. Inevitably, sure, you'll always have one ability that doesn't really work well with others within a set. But within any set of ten abilities, things combine well. This feels like Dominion, but with a totally different engine. They take ten random cards, put them together, something's going to give you a puzzle to, to balance through, something's going to give you a puzzle to move through. Although this is obviously not deck building, it's an entirely different genre, but it has that feel of a deck builder where you have ten different things in play, and then a pre-constructed shuffle deck where you start playing and balancing that timing of the game. Now, as far as things I didn't like in Cocopelli, it's mostly going to be some small semantic things. To begin with, I thought the iconography on the cards was silly and poorly done. The cards each have text on the bottom, which is very helpful, very readable, very easy to go through, and then iconography, which there's no point, in my opinion, of ever struggling to work your way through. It is not clear, and it's unnecessary because the text is right there. In fact, I think, going to my next point, the next point is, I think the game needs better player aids. The base game comes with a player A that is expired and useless as soon as you have the expansion. Suddenly you no longer have all the abilities at play. I think the game would have been better served instead of iconography, would have been better served by having just two or three wars at the top as a reminder towards other players looking towards your cards. Because my own cards, I don't need a player aid for. It says on the card what to do. Your cards, as you play them, I'm like, yeah, sure, I remember that there's this gray goat thingy, but I don't remember what it does. Oh yeah, this is play two cards of the same type as a Cocopelli card. I feel instead of iconography, which is hard to read and not that well done, a simple two or three words to give the players across the table a, a feel for what the card does might have been a better use of that, of that area on the card. Additionally, and again pedantic and complaining, 
Game Trace, you know I love you here. I've always said nice things about Game Trace. Almost always said nice things about Game Trace. This is one of those times where the Game Trace insert was like 87% great and 13% felt like it missed something. Unless I'm missing how to store my game. The Game Trace insert, which is generally well done, has card wells that just don't have a full wall to the card well. So there's these halfway card wells that result in the cards basically toppling over unless you perfectly condense the right amount of cards, which means you can't really plan around, you know, the player colors or the card types. You're just kind of shoving cards in there because too much and it doesn't fit and too few and it's toppling over. It felt, it felt off. And I'm wondering if I'm missing something because Game Trace, like, all but two or three times has generally been incredibly well done, and, well, that's that. As far as what I can see others not liking for this game, to begin with, it does have, at times, a take-that feel. Now, it's not actually take-that in the typical sense, but the very fact that I can close off your ability can feel like take-that. The very fact that I can take that ability away from you, that, that engine that you're building, you're like, well, I can close my cars off in three ceremonies, I can extra point for that. I'm like, no, you don't, and no, you don't. Now, I got eight points, and you don't have your abilities anymore. Now, it's not as simple as all that. You have to work a little harder towards it. But you can push people to close their own ceremonies by putting a card or two down. Or you can close them off yourself if they haven't moved that far. So you definitely have a bit of a take that feel, especially if the two players on your side are both trying to close your own ceremonies. Which brings me to my second point of what I can see others not liking, which the game can be victim to a player playing poorly and therefore skewing the balance of the game. If the two people over here keep targeting me or if a player is playing inefficiently and setting me up, you can have different players dynamics because of the way they affect others messing with the balance of the game. If I'm constantly playing one or two cards to this player over here and I'm constantly setting themselves up to close their own ceremonies, then they're able to, to get more points more often because I'm basically helping them. So players playing inefficiently or players ganging up against you could be a small thing to be worth mentioning Again, not a problem for me. These are just things I can see potentially being a problem for yourself and or your game group. As far as final thoughts and rating on Coca Pelli, Coca Pelli is going to be a 4 to 5 for me. My rating skills down below, you can read in the description down below, but a 4 is going to be a great game, a solid game that I'm really happy to add to my collection. This is a game that I, I read, again, I told you in the beginning, I wasn't that interested in Coca Pelli when I first saw it. Something about the card play didn't pull me in. And then even when I read the rules, I was like, okay, I can see how there's a cute little puzzle here. And then I played my first game and I was like, that's not bad. This is a solid three out of five, a cute little game that I'll probably get rid of. And then each subsequent play of Coca Pelli, I enjoyed more and more. As you get a feeling for the timing, as you start to see the different abilities, as you want to have another game, just one more to combine it, and the short play time and the variableness gives you a reason to continue to dive back into this one. This is one where I've really been appreciating it. It feels, it feels different. It doesn't feel like a typical Stefan Feld game, of course, in the sense that everything you do gives you points, or in Coco Pelli, everything you do has an ability, which is a slightly different, a nuanced shift from Stefan Feld's typical point salad. But it very much is a game that rewards you. It's a game that rewards repeat plays. It's a game that rewards you with the variability. It's a game that gives you a different puzzle to solve every single time you play it. And it's a, it's one that I'm more impressed by than I was expecting to be. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this has been my review of Coca Pelli. And as always, have a good one.